Dear listener, have you ever considered our planet being invaded by foreign beings? There is no doubt about such an event. But will it be a friendly or hostile invasion? Listen to the good news of the invasion of our planet brought to you by Francois. I invite you to accompany me to one of the most interesting and fascinating places in the world. Do you recognize this place? You're not looking at the exhaust system of a small Japanese car, but of a rocket. The rocket which blasted humans to the moon. On this plaque we read, Astronauts Neil Armstrong, Edwin Aldrin and Michael Collins were launched on the Apollo 11 mission July 16, 1969 and achieved the first landing on the moon July 20, 1969. I was amazed at this moon rock that was brought back to our planet by these astronauts. We serve a great God. One of these days he's going to show us some of the other wonders of his universe. Far beyond the Milky Way of Andromeda, there are marvelous mysteries to be discovered. In one of our future lectures, we'll do an in-depth study on what the Bible has to say about astronomy. You are going to listen to amazing revelations. In spite of the greatness of space, he also knows about you and me and he has plans for our lives. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. The God who created millions upon millions of galaxies has not forgotten this tiny little cosmic speck of dust on which you and I live. He even knows our home addresses. We are going to explore some of God's marvelous future plans for us. One of them will be God's self-revelation one of these days. More frequently than ever before do we hear scientists speculating about the possibility that creatures from outer space could invade our planet. But the Revelation already chapter already mentioned such 11. an invasion more than then three I millenniums ago. Heard the voice we are going of to explore many angels this numbering thousands upon thousands. And this is what our planet looked like when we invaded our nearest satellite, the moon. Quite spectacular. And everybody on our planet got the news that very same day. If this invasion of a neighbor in outer space was so spectacular, wait till you see God and the heavenly army invading our solar system. Imagine the God of glory coming to our little planet. His light is infinitely more luminous and spectacular than all the stars of the universe put together. When God invades our solar system, the entire heavenly host will accompany him. No human pen can portray his majesty and glory that will soon be revealed. Revelation chapter 5 verse 11 Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. Is there a calculator that can tell us how many angels there are? I don't think so. Before studying about the glorious second advent of Christ, let us first consider the relationship between his first coming to the earth 2,000 years ago and his second coming. Romans 5 verse 19 says, Through the disobedience of the one man, many were made sinners. When Adam, the representative of the human race, sinned, the entire human race sinned with him. And what are the wages of sin? Eternal death. How can you and I escape this death penalty and earn God's favor? What are the righteous requirements of the law? Perfect obedience. In other words, from the day of my birth and throughout my entire life, I'm expected to live a sinless life. Have you, my friend, satisfied the demands of the law? I have not. Romans chapter 3.23 says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The law demands perfect obedience and I cannot give it. So what are the wages of sin? Eternal death. How can God possibly save us? 
When Jesus, our representative, died on Calvary, the demands of the law were fully satisfied. Now there is hope for every sinner. In Christ we have lived perfect lives, and in him we have died for all our sins. And now I can go back to the law, as Charles Wesley says, and present to the law the merits of Jesus Christ and say, You have condemned me to death because I've transgressed you. And now I bring you the perfect sacrifice of Jesus my Lord who obeyed and died in my place. This was the good news that Adam and Eve received after they had sinned. And this is still the good news. Everyone who has accepted this marvellous provision will allow the Holy Spirit to write God's law in his heart. The first coming brought the assurance of our salvation. During the second coming, Jesus brings the reward of eternal life for those who have accepted him as Lord. Hebrews 9.28 So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people. And he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. 1,500 times the prophets of the Old Testament repeated the good news. He will come. He will come to die in our stead. And then John the Baptist proclaimed, He has come. And now for the good news, He will come again. A total of 300 New Testament verses tell us of His glorious return. Let's read a few promises of Christ's return. John 14, 1-3 says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you may also be where I am. This chapel on the Mount of Olives is built in commemoration of Christ's ascension. While the disciples looked into the sky, watching this amazing phenomenon, two angels appeared to them and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is Acts chapter 1 verses 10 and 11. It is very important to understand exactly in what manner Jesus will come. Why? Because the devil is going to try to imitate this climactic event. Matthew 24 verse 24 For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that were possible. Matthew 24 verse 26 So if anyone tells you, there he is, out in the desert, do not go out. Or, here he is, in the inner rooms, do not believe it. Have you heard about the secret rapture? Have you heard about the secret chambers? Watch out, study your Bible very carefully. When you read all the 2,500 Bible verses on the second coming, you get a glorious picture of a dazzling heavenly glory. There is nothing secret about his second coming. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 Look, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him. There is nothing secret about this event. Both good and bad eyes will see him. Matthew 24 verse 30 says, At that time the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of the sky with great glory. Only the lost will be mourning when Jesus comes. Let's read more verses about the visibility of his second coming. Matthew 26 verse 64 In the future you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Besides being visible, the second coming will also be very personal. In Job 19 verse 27 we read, I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. If you are in the same position today that Job was in many years ago, cheer up. 
Jesus is coming again and he will restore all your losses and much more. Besides being visual, the second coming of Christ will also be audible. Everybody will hear him when he comes. Matthew 24 verse 31 And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. Just imagine the sound of the greatest brass band ever. Billions upon billions of angels blowing their trumpets, announcing to the cosmos that Jesus has come to take his children home. The awe-inspiring music produced by these exciting angel trumpeters will echo from galaxy to galaxy. Every star and every planet will hear it. But that's not all. Listen to this. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with a voice of the archangel and with a trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. First Thessalonians 4 verse 16. Above the mighty sound of a billion trumpets will be heard the voice of Jesus. We are going to listen to the same voice that spoke the universe into existence. This is very exciting. How will his voice affect the living and the dead? This lady was buried under volcanic ash when Vesuvius erupted. When Paul visited Italy, she might well have accepted Jesus. Then soon she will hear the voice of Jesus and receive immortality. John 5 verses 28 and 29 Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good will rise to live. Somewhere in a lonely cemetery lies a loved one. If he or she accepted Christ as their saviour while still alive, they will rise. They will be resurrected to life forevermore. What a glorious prospect. John 5 verse 25 I tell you the truth, a time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. I cannot imagine a more terrible remorse than being lost when he returns. Let's read a few more verses that describe the majestic glory of this event. Luke 21 verse 27 At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Matthew 25 verse 31 When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. Matthew 24 verse 27 For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Where I grew up I saw lots of lightning, but when Jesus comes the entire sky will be filled with lightning. What do the clouds and the lightning mean that accompany Jesus when he comes? Matthew 28 verses 2 to 4 there was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. Part of the dazzling lightning during the second coming of Christ will be caused by the appearance of billions upon billions of shining, glorious angels. What else will the angels do? Listen to this exciting revelation from Matthew 24 verse 31. He will send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. What a thought! The angelic cloud descends and gathers all of God's people. When only one angel came down to call Jesus from the tomb, there was a tremendous earthquake. The soldiers were struck down by his glory. One of these days, all his angels will accompany him. There will again be lightning and an earthquake such as we have never experienced before. Listen to this mind-boggling description of the second coming in Luke 9 verse 26. If anyone is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory 
and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Let's try to imagine this dazzling display of divine glory. You're looking at the spiral galaxy with its 500 billion huge suns and unnumbered planets orbiting around them. It is impossible to measure the brilliance of the light of all these heavenly bodies. During the second coming, God the Father is going to display all His divine glory. God the Son is going to display all His divine glory and all the billions and billions of angels are coming in all their celestial glory. The light of a trillion suns is but a faint reflection of the glory of God the Father and God the Son and all the angels. When Jesus comes, the entire cosmos will be ablaze with the brightness of his coming. How will this indescribable, brilliant volume of light and glory affect our planet? Every mountain and island was removed from its place. Revelation 6.14 Revelation 16 verse 18 says, Then there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it has ever occurred since man has been on earth. So tremendous was the quake. Revelation 16 verse 19, The cities of the nations collapsed. This beautiful planet will suddenly be turned into a heap of rubble when Jesus comes. It's going to be the greatest cataclysmic event in all history. Parts of Israel are very barren. This is a scene from the Negev. The prophet Jeremiah gives us a picture of what the earth will look like after the second coming of Jesus. Jeremiah 4 verses 23 to 25. I looked at the earth and it was formless and empty and at the heavens and their light was gone. I looked at the mountains and they were quaking, all the hills were swaying. I looked and there were no people. Manhattan, New York. This mighty city will become a heap of ruins when Jesus comes, says the prophet Jeremiah. Our planet will not be able to defend itself against the glory of our coming king. When I visited the wall of shame in Berlin, I never thought it would come down so soon, but it did. The second coming of Jesus is going to take place at a time the world would least expect it. Matthew 24 verse 44 You must also be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. When will Jesus come? People like to set dates for this great event. But the Bible tells us that no one knows the exact time of His coming. Matthew 24 verse 36 No one knows about the day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, not the Son, but only the Father. Although we do not know the exact time of his return, the signs of the times tell us that his coming is nearer than we think. Why will Jesus come again? Have you thought about this? 1 Thessalonians 4.16 For the Lord himself will come down from heaven, with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. First of all, he's coming to raise the dead. What's next? Verse 17 says, After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. What a grand reunion! Lonely, broken people are hurting because of the loss of a loved one or a broken relationship. Take heart, my dear friend. When Jesus comes, the pain will go. What a day of rejoicing when loved ones will meet once again. There will be parents who have lost a child. Angels will gather them and return them to their parents. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 52 to 54 Listen, I tell you a mystery, says Paul. We will not all sleep, that means die, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed, for the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. 
when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. What a thought. A space adventure without a space suit like the one I saw at Cape Kennedy. The immortal body that you and I will receive from Jesus will take us through space. I want to enjoy the thrill of passing through the celestial wonders of the universe on my way to heaven. I want to be part of the happy crowd who will forever be with their loved ones and with Jesus. But the Bible tells me there will be another sad group of people when Jesus comes. Listen to their agonizing cry. Revelation 6 verse 16 They called to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. I don't want to be part of that crowd. I want to be part of those who will rejoice at his appearance. Listen to their jubilant cry. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God, we trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord, we trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Isaiah 25 verse 9 How can you and I be ready for Jesus? It's very simple. Here in the vicinity of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus extended an invitation. Matthew 11 verse 28 Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. What is it that burdens us down? It could be the burden of guilt and spiritual insecurity. But, says this friend of mine on a boat at the Sea of Galilee, I think I've gone too far. Will God accept a sinner like me? What do you think? Can God forgive this man? Yes, Jesus says in John 6, 37, Whoever comes to me I will never drive away. That includes you and me. Paul says in Romans 5, verse 8, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I bring you the good news that your entrance into heaven has already been taken care of. Have you thanked the Lord for it? Ephesians 2 verse 8 For it is by grace that you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Have you accepted the gift of his free salvation? The moment I accept the forgiveness and salvation that Jesus offers me, I am ready to go to heaven when he comes to fetch me at his second coming. Titus 3 verse 7 Having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. God's forgiving grace inspires one to fight the good fight of faith. Listen to what 2 Timothy 4 verse 7 and 8 says. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Philippians 3.14 I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. I perform spiritually not to earn my salvation, but to acknowledge it. What happens when you receive news of someone of importance coming to visit you? You get your house in order. You prepare for the visit and you clean your house. The Bible tells us about the purifying effect of the expectancy of the second coming of Christ. 1 John chapter 3, verses 2 and 3 Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. If you want to have a purifying experience, then hope for the second coming of Jesus, says the Apostle John. God wants us to look forward to that great event with all our hearts. 
Before Paul was executed, he wrote these beautiful words from a prison in Rome, 2 Timothy 4 verse 8. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. What a testimony. Like Paul, we are all in some kind of jail. Maybe it's a marital prison or a jail of rejection. Maybe you're locked up in a prison of difficult circumstances. Maybe you're in a prison house of terrible hurt. The Bible has got good news. Jesus is coming soon. What kind of expression will be on your face when he comes? One of fear and regret or one of hope and joy? Your future destiny depends on your present spiritual condition. If you confess your sins right now and ask God to forgive you, he will gladly do so. We cannot afford to miss heaven. The loss would be too great. I want to commit my life anew to him this very moment. What about you? I'm looking forward to the wonderful event, the second coming of Jesus. What about you? Heavenly Father, thank you for the promise that Jesus is coming soon. It fills us with hope. Help us to be ready and to be part of the joyful group of people on that glorious day when we will say, This is our God. We have waited for him. Oh, what a glorious day that will be. Amen.